Welcome back once again, everybody, to Cedar Flags. We are back and we are working in this semi awkward area sandwiched between a bunch of paths and we are putting in a flat ride. And that ride is the Observation Tower Sky Deck. I don't really know if there's like a proper term for this ride, but we all know what it is. It's the giant spinning tower that goes up really high and gives you a pretty decent view of the entire park. So this is kind of just a, a something I've always wanted in the park is this ride. And this is kind of just a nice place to put it. Like I was saying, this is a very awkward area and we'll talk a little bit about that, but I really love where this ends up because it's got a really great view of the park. Now it's not centralized in the park, but the surrounding areas are also in view of this ride now. And if you've played this game on this map in particular, you know there are mountains and lakes all outside the boundaries that we can build in. So a really interesting area to ride this. And of course we'll ride it in the live portion toward the end of the video. But yes, this is a very interesting area, mostly because of the pathing that we have over here. Uh, you'll notice the pathing down toward the lake is elevated. The pathing farther away from the lake is flat on the ground. Now that poses a bit of a issue or challenge rather, and that is just how to make all of this work. Now it's not super complicated because we did elevate the ride, but if you've played this game at all, and played around the, the phenomenal pathing system that we all love, you'll know how tough it is to make that transition from an elevated path down to a flat ground path. So that's kind of what we're working with around here and uh, we figure it out, but it's, it's just kind of an awkward spot because there's almost enough room down here for like two rides, but we're just putting the one ride in and just trying to work the landscaping in. And you'll see as we progress through with all of the bushes and rocks and stuff that we place down here, it pulls the whole area together, which is really nice. We also add this little water feature down here, which connects up to the actual lake, and we'll do that in a second here, but this really just takes up a lot of the room throughout this area. It's like a lower point of the terrain, and it would fill with water, and as you can see, what we're doing right now, actually, is putting a little bit of like a drainage pipe system through here, and it really pulls these two areas together. I love what we do with this because the little boat uh, suspending system, I don't, they're probably like a, it's almost like a dry, dry dock. I don't really know. There's probably a better word for it, but uh, over there you can see we have our little boat hanging for some maintenance over there. And it just, it works really well because it looks like that water can flow through over to this area. And it's just really a nice way to pull this whole area together. Um, of course, we don't actually have any pipes down here. We could have maybe done that if we wanted to and if we planned ahead a little bit more than we did here and actually like dug out for the water and then created like actual pipes down there. But we did not do that. And we are just kind of taking the, the faster approach of putting a couple of these gated uh, windows down here to create the pipe effect. So a really simple solution down here. And I really love how this turns out. Of course, now we got to go through and put some rocks all over the place. Yes, this is one of the trademarks of Cedar Flags and the area. Lots of rock work done. We actually have a command for that over on the live streams. And we actually have a couple of our emotes are rock themed and they are great. Um, just kind of filling in this area, making it somewhat of a nice little nature area. So uh, the queue line, if you're walking around here, um, it's not anything too special, but it does give you a little bit of like a, a scenic area to walk around down here. And of course, we have some of these giant trees all over the place around this queue. So it does provide a little bit of shade. And it's interesting because in a sense, you look up and all you see is a tree and then you hop on the ride and it takes you way up over those trees and it really like reveals um, the park as you go up. It's really a really cool effect and it was completely accidental. <laughs> it was more or less just something that we needed to fill the space with. And of course, why not put the trees because we've been doing that all over the park. And uh, yeah, this is kind of just a, uh, a continuation of what we do around the area. Now you'll notice some of the bushes that we're using are We've used these before, but we colored them fully green. So it 
almost adds another element. These, uh, the ones I'm talking about are the smaller, rounder ones, and they come with like a white flower on them. But when you turn it to green, it's more of just a full bush, which is uh, kind of an interesting change from remembering like those, the flower elements of those. It almost just makes it more of like a, a background shrub instead of just a front and center like decor shrub. So again, Going through here and doing some of the terrain painting now, uh, we have mulch all over the park, and this is actually something that I've been thinking about a lot. Whoever has to mulch this park is a champion. Like, it is absurd how much mulch we put down around this area, or around this park, and I would think you'd need semi-truck, dump truck size loads of mulch every year, because usually you mulch every year. Um, this is something that, I don't even want to think about logistically. I don't even, I don't know. They have those mulch blower trucks um, that would probably help a little bit, but just like all of the mulch we need is absurd. Uh, but nah, it's just some, one of those little things that I think about in terms of like a real world problem that we would never have because it's a video game. So that's probably why we end up putting so much stuff down without thinking of like the costs involved or like log logistically how it would all work. But luckily, we don't have to do that, so that's always a good thing. Now, the one thing about this area was the change in elevation. So we have our ride down lower than the terrain toward the top of that flat ground path toward Copper Forge over there. Um, this was always gonna be a challenge, and what we're doing here is creating a little bit of a ridge line with some of these rocks. This is something that I've done a lot, and actually you'll see this a lot in the real world when there's a change in elevation. Usually, instead of just a really steep slope full of mulch or grass, the landscapers, we'll put in some sort of retaining wall and it kind of helps keep soil from eroding, but it also looks a little bit better than just a plain hill down there. So that's something that we do here with the rocks and the shrubs there, a little bit of undergrowth under there just to, to really keep it um, broken up from just a, a wall of rocks. But then we're of course putting some trees down around here, like I was mentioning before. Now this ride is actually enclosed, which is a good thing because typically when you're putting trees around a ride, you wanna make sure the, the riders will not interfere with the trees or the trees interfere with the riders. However, you wanna look at it. Um, luckily this ride is enclosed and for the most part, there are no trees that are remotely close but even if they are a little bit close, there are going to be some sort of barriers between the people and the nature. So um, what we're doing right now is something that I thought about and then quickly rejected the idea of, and that is putting a fence line up here. Um, this is one thing that I really don't like in this game, and that is fencing. Uh, I really wish we had a better way to do sloped fence fences, especially. Uh, they're just, they're very, very challenging. And of course, we just ditched that idea altogether and just put a rock retaining wall up there. Now, the last thing we have to do here, and we're gonna quickly jump over into the live section, is a little concession area, just to fill this plaza out a little bit. But let's hop on over to the live section and look at all of this a little bit closer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live over here on top of the new ride. And of course, you get these absolutely stunning views of the mountains around the entire park and of the park itself. Now, this thing is stupid tall, which I think is realistic. Um, I, I think I asked my live chat as we were building this if this was realistic, and I think some of them were saying yes. This is a realistic height. This thing is massive. It's by far the tallest ride in our park right now. And as we come down here, we'll hop out and we'll check on it. It's just such a pleasant experience though. Look at that. We have such a good view of the hotel over there. Oh man, this thing is one of those rides that isn't necessarily the most thrilling, but these cabins are air conditioned and when you're walking around in the heat all day and you just need a little bit of a breather, this is a spectacular way to do that. So as we come down below the tree line that we talked about earlier, let's go ahead and hop out and check out the area. So as I was saying, that thing is massive. So yes, this thing puts the little drop tower we have over there 
to shame. And I think it's going to remain, if I'm correct, it's going to remain as the tallest ride in our park, I think, uh, of all time. I don't think the other rides that we're going to be putting in in the future that we may or may not have already built. If you go and check out the live stream, you can see what we're talking about. Um, I don't think anything else comes close, but uh, let's check out the little plaza we were working on really quickly in the end. This is one of those areas that had a lot of just empty space. So I figured, you know, we'd probably have some sort of way to capitalize on that. So we, of course, put in our little gulpy and pip shot stands that we had off the theme maker toolkit item list. And they're not functioning, unfortunately, but if they were, this would be a prime spot because it is right on the entrance. So as soon as you get in from the backside of the park, you see the little drink stand and it's something you could grab on your way throughout the park and uh, enjoy. So yes, there's that. And then of course the little queue area, this little water feature down here just really pulls the area together. It really makes it feel like it's alive and it really makes it feel like this shoreline we've built up over time. And it really is just a nice, pleasant area. Like I said, we maybe could have fit another ride down here or something, but it just, it was almost too small at that point. And so that water feature just really, really fits in there real nice. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what else I could really say about this thing. Um, we it was a quick, simple build, and it was one of those things that we just had to get something done over in this little area. And it fits so well in the next episode. We will be working over here on something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. But you guys are going to have to come back and check that out in the next one. So I will see you guys then. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Thumbs down if you disliked it, of course. And I'll catch you next time right back here in Cedar Flags.